Okay, friends, welcome. Uh, online friends, welcome. So we're going to do a 60-minute power flow class. Um, we're going to start out today's po uh, class in child's pose. So if you feel like you can fold right away into child's pose, if your knees are up for it, awesome. You can go right into it. Otherwise, it could feel nice just to take a stretch back into downward facing dog for a moment. Maybe pedal out through your legs. And then just whatever you're doing, let's just start to deepen the breath a little bit. Take some nice sighs out the mouth down to empty. And then eventually, we'll lower into child's pose. So knees out wide. Tops of the feet to the ground. Big toes draw together. And then sit bones back towards your heels. Release the weight of the forehead all the way down to the ground with your arms lengthened out in front of you. And then we'll find our three-part breath exercise. This is Dirga Swasam Pranayama. So just release your air all the way down to empty. <sighs> Breathe into your low belly and your low back. And hold there. Breathe into your mid-abdomen and your mid-back. Hold there. Fill all the way up to the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Once you've got the full breath, just relax. And then exhale for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, from the bottom, do it again. Breathe in low belly, low back. And hold there. Fill into your mid abdomen and your mid back. Hold there, and then take the breath all the way into the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Once you got your full breath, relax and hold, and then sip in a little more air to top it up. And that slow exhale for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Awesome. Start your ujjayi breathing from here. So you're sipping the air in through your nose, filling from the bottom smoothly all the way up to the top, and then you're exhaling through your nose like you're fogging up a mirror. Engaging the muscles in the back of the throat so it feels like you're closing the back of the throat off. And then creating that sound like hollow wind or ocean waves. And the minute we start to engage our breath in this way where we are consciously taking inhales, we are consciously controlling exhales, you are practicing mindfulness. You are stepping into the here and now with what's happening with your body. So we'll keep that mindful practice with us the entire time that we go through these poses. And that's what really creates the entirety of our yoga practice, having that awareness with us. Awesome. When you're ready, just bring yourself up to a tabletop, hands and knees, and we'll start to work into some cat and cow. So lifting into cow, dropping belly, taking chest, tailbone up. And then in your cats, letting the weight of the head release, tailbone drop, mid-back lift up. And you can really work through this as slow or as fast as you like, meaning maybe one inhale takes you to a, a one, one of these, an exhale takes you to the other. Or maybe you're going to hold on to one for a, a couple rounds of breath or a single round of breath. You could try rocking back a little bit, rocking forward a little bit, or out to the sides through your hips or through your shoulders or through your head. And then when you're, you know, adding this movement into your practice, the breath is still right there. It's the leader. So the breath is, is, is you know, teaching your body how to move, is controlling the pace of the movement. You can keep doing your uh, cat and cows, or if you want to warm up your wrists, We'll turn the insides of the wrists forward to the front of the mat. So your thumbs point to the side and your fingers point back. And then working with your breath, you can start to lean back and peel your palms off the mat back to your fingertips. And then just roll the palms all the way back down into the ground, rooting back into the palms. And if you're taking that, let's just do it a few times. And then take the back of your hands to the mat if you're working with me on this. Your fingers can point in towards one another or your fingers can point backwards. And then you could just massage side to side or back and forth or that same thing where you're leaning back to your fingernails 
or peeling back to your fingernails and then rocking back forward, taking the back of the hands down to the mat. And eventually we'll just sit back into hero's pose so your feet come together, tops of the feet are to the ground, sit bones back towards your heels and take a moment and just roll out through your wrists, move into your fingers. Fantastic. Take it into your plank position when you're ready, stepping your toes to the back of the mat. And then have your hips right on level with your shoulders here. Let's tone the biceps in towards center line. And then when you're ready, breath at the top. And on your next exhale, we'll just slowly lower halfway down, leading with the sternum. And then on the inhale, lift back up. You can do this on your knees with your ankles crossed as well. So exhale halfway down. And on the inhale, lift back up. Try to avoid bending the hips. Last one, exhale comes halfway down. And then inhale, lift back up. Slow exhale brings us all the way flat down to the belly, tops the feet to the ground. Beautiful, and then we'll start to lift into locust pose. So pulling the thighs up off the ground, lifting the arms off the ground, chest is off the ground, and just creating this length through the back of your neck where your chin is tucked slightly back in towards the throat. Find your breath here. I like to add a little bend into the elbow so they're slightly lifting up, and then your shoulder blades are toning in towards one another. Stay with your breathing. Just find one more inhale wherever you're at. And then when your exhale comes, you can release down, palms under your shoulders, tuck your toes. To get to down dog, you can move through tabletop or just take a plank up on the inhale and on the exhale, shift back into your down dog. And then just walk out through your down dog here. If you're pressing into your right heel, you can bend the left knee a little bit. You can also pull your left hip back away from your right hand at the same time. So if you switch that up and you were dropping your left heel towards the ground, you'd bend your right knee, and then your right hip can pull back on a diagonal from your left hand. And then let's bring our awareness into our hands. So they're just slightly wider than shoulders. Palms are spread into the mat, fingers are gripping. And then the weight of your head is released so you're looking back between your legs. If your elbows are locked, just add a little micro bend and then let the biceps hug in towards center line. Lift the hips back and up in space, pull the hips back up away and then find the, the length through the back of your legs, letting your heels draw down and feet are right at about hip bone distance. We'll take baby steps on the balls of the feet to the top of your mat into a forward fold. And you can stay on your palms or go to your fingertips at any point in time that you want. On your inhale, come halfway up, lengthen through your spine. We'll be here for a couple rounds of breath just to explore this shape. So you can push into your legs to help the spine come parallel to the ground. And then tone your shoulder blades in like you've got a pencil you're squeezing between them. Gaze down to the ground, let your chin slightly come in towards your throat. Awesome, on that exhale, just fold forward. With your fingertips connecting to the mat, so bending your knees as deep as you need to, give your head a slow nod, yes. And then a slow side to side nod, no. vertebrae by vertebrae, roll up to standing. Head will be the very last thing to stack up. When the head stacks up, inhale to extend your arms wide, reach up tall. And on the exhale, just draw your hands down into your heart center. Inhale to reach, extend arms wide, reach up tall, breathe into mountain. And with that exhale, hinge out from your hips and just control your swan dive down into your forward fold. Release the head all the way at the bottom. Inhale, half lift, lengthen through the spine, strengthen around it. And then plant your hands, move into your plank. 
and your choice of how you want to get to down dog. So you could shift directly back from here. You could go halfway down and we could go into low cobra or find upward facing dog. I'm taking up dog on this one, tops of the feet to the ground, hips are slightly lifted, shoulder heads away from the ears, and then we're taking it back into down dog when you're ready from here. Awesome, release the head, gaze back behind you, find the engagement around it. And on an inhale, take your right leg up to a three-legged downward facing dog. Press your right heel up, let the inside of your right hip face uh, in towards where your left hip is facing, if that makes sense. Or the visual I always work with is imagine you're opening a pair of scissors. And rather than the, the blades starting to face different directions, the blades still face the same directions as you open them. So the inside of your right hip is still pointing down and back. When you're ready, friends, on your next exhale, just step up into a low lunge position. Line your knee up right above your heel. Find the strength in your legs. And then we'll rise up into a high crescent lunge. And to stabilize, let your thighs pull in towards one another. Back heel is lifting off the ground so you're on the ball of the left foot and then driving down into that right heel. Find the strength around your right knee and then engage that right glute. Your glute muscles will pull back up away from you. Breathe in and open into your warrior two when you're ready. So knife edge of the left foot to the ground. You might open your stance up a little bit longer towards the front of the mat and the back. Heels are in one line from the front of the mat to the back. And then that right sit bone tucked underneath your body. Open through your arms. Shoulder heads released down away from the ears and the back here. And just gazing out over those front fingertips. Feel the strength of both of your legs here pressing to the ground and then those thighs toning in towards center line. Right palm to the sky. Left hand to your hip thigh behind you. Reverse your warrior when you're ready. So reaching that right arm up nice and tall. If you want to add a bend into your elbow, we can reach back through the arm. But just focusing on that lift up through your side body as you're continuing to press down into your lunge. Gaze can be up in space, maybe to the left side of the room. You could even look down at your left foot if you wanted to back behind you. Beautiful friends, take an inhale into this reverse warrior. And on your exhale, cartwheel your hands down to frame your right foot. Turn on to the ball of your left foot. So standing splits, and all I want you to think about when you move into this as le left leg lifts is that you're moving into a standing forward fold with just one leg lifted. So one-legged standing forward fold. Weight of your head releases to look behind you. Root your fingertips, fists, or palms to the ground. You can always bend into your right knee to get that connection. And then push into the ground as if you were going to lift yourself up into a handstand. Pull that left leg up nice and tall and find your breath as you fold through your upper body here. If you ever need to remind your head to release, you could give your head a little side to side movement. Nice guys, take one more inhale to lift left leg up tall. And then on your exhale, you can just let the left foot meet the right full forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale halfway up, lengthen through your spine. Find that shape in your back. And on your exhale, fly your arms backwards in space, similar to how you were doing in locust pose, except that your gaze is down. Crown of the head is reaching forward. Bend your knees a little bit deeper than you would on your half lift. Feel the shoulder blades toned in. And then to move this into a flying chair, all you ha do is lift your heels off the ground and start to lift your chest up and your gaze comes forward. But we keep that same shape through the arms. Use your breathing here. Feet are at hip bone distance or you can have big toes, ankle bones, knees, thighs, all pressed in towards center. And breathing into that heat we're building up in the legs. Drop your right heel and then inhale your arms and your left knee up into a one-legged mountain. Left knee bent at 90 degrees. Thigh bone plugged into your hip. 
and then rooting down into that big right toe, really all corners of your feet. But sometimes just that, that one cue helps me out a lot of my balance when you feel that big toe rooting to the ground. Full extension up through your arms. And it's just like you were doing mountain with both feet to the ground. We're just working with that one leg lifted. Awesome. If you want, start to reach your left leg forward as you lift your left thigh up. And rather than leaning back to do this, I want you to feel like you're pressing more forward or like there's a suitcase handle on your thigh right here that's lifting up as you're extending your leg out. Breathe in, and then we'll take Dakasana airplane on your exhale. Left leg swims back, arms swim back. So just like uh, locust pose, just like flying chair, in this one your gaze is slightly up, your chest is slightly up. Arms flying back, shoulder blades toned in. An inhale can take you back into a high crescent lunge. We've already been here before. We'll play with that balance. Full expression of this pose, so nice and deep in the lunge, nice and strong through your legs, extended through your arms. And then on an exhale, friends, just bring your hands down to frame that right foot. And we'll take Vashisthasana side plank. So the left hand is your base. So you can go onto the outside edge of the left foot, stack the right, the right hand can come to your hip. If you want to use a kickstand, take your left knee down to the ground with your toes out to the side. And then right hand could stay to your hip, reach up. It could extend forward if you like. Stay with your breath here. Feel those hips lifting up away from the ground. Awesome. We don't want to be sinking into that left arm, pushing down into it, drawing away. Then when you're ready, friends, turn into your plank. And again, your choice of how you're going to make your way into down dog. So you could go directly. We could go halfway down to Chaturanga Dandasana and then take low cobra or upward facing dog and then finding our way back into our down dog. Take a couple rounds of breath, check that the weight of the head is relaxed, you're looking back behind you. On your inhale, draw your left leg back and up in space. Three-legged down dog. Front of your left hip bone is pointing down and back. Again, think about those scissor blades opening up. So rather than, if the blade is essentially the front of your left leg, and rather than your blade pointing to the left side of the room, you want to keep the blade pointing towards the back wall, pointing down and back. Awesome. On your next exhale, step that left foot up in between your hands, find your low lunge position, knee right over your heel, and then we'll take that strength of our leg, strength of our core, and just reach that up into our high crescent lunge. And immediately stabilizing, immediately pulling thighs in towards center line. Back right heel pulling forward. You're on the ball of the left foot. Finding that 90 degree bend in your front knee, pressing down into the foot, feeling your quadricep wrapping around your knee, and then letting your glute pull back up away from your knee right here, finding the strength in it. Perfect, breathe into your high crescent. And then we'll open to our warrior two on the exhale, so that knife edge of the right foot. And you've got time to make any adjustments in your stance. So maybe you elongate a little bit, or you get those heels lined up. Feel your spine coming straight up in space, arms opening wide, releasing shoulder heads, and then just gazing out over those front fingertips. And we get to get deep in the hips here. We get to open up through the hips, but we're doing it with that stabilization. We're still pulling back in towards center line as you're pressing down into the individual legs. Left palm to the sky, right hand to your hip thigh or behind you, and then reaching left arm up super tall as you stay down in that lunge. If you're wrapping your right hand behind you, there's also the choice if your fingertips reach to the front of the thigh, where you can give a little press down into your left thigh, reminding it to get into that lunge. And then your gaze wherever you want it. Up in space, right side of the room, back down to your right foot. Awesome. Find your breath. Take one more inhale here, and on the exhale, you'll cartwheel your hands down to frame the left foot, move on to the ball of the right, and then we're taking standing splits, so right leg lifts. Again, just a forward fold, a standing forward fold with the right leg lifting on one leg. 
fingertips root to the ground. And then it's kind of natural that you want to lift your head up here and look down at the ground. But I want you to release the head. So you're looking backwards. Crown of the head is pointing down. And then from there, press into your fingertips, fists, or palms as if you were going to take yourself up into a handstand or just like you're doing a, a push-up to the ground. So feeling that connection. So you're lifting your right leg up in space, but you're also pushing it back and up in space as you push down to the ground. One more inhale here. And on the exhale, step up into a forward fold, right foot meets the left. Once you've got your alignment, inhale halfway up, lengthen your spine, stay in your half lift. On your exhale, we'll just fly the arms back in space and bend the knees a little bit deeper. So spine is parallel to the ground, gaze is looking down, crown of the head is reaching forward, shoulder blades toned in, fingers extending back, and then take this into flying chair simply by lifting your heels, lifting your chest up, gaze is forward, and then still continuing to feel those shoulder blades back behind you. Find your breath. Nice, drop your left heel. Inhale, arms, right knee, lift up, one-legged mountain. Right knee bent at 90, so your thighs pulling up parallel to the ground, and then your thigh bones plugging back into your hip, press down into that left foot, root into your big left toe, find full extension of your arms. If you want, as you're lifting that right thigh up, start to extend your right leg forward as if you're pushing it out into the wall in front of you. So there's a lot of core strength lifting up as we extend forward. One more inhale to lift up. And then when your exhale comes, swim back into airplane, our Dakasana. So right leg back. Chest is shining up. Gaze is shining up. Elbows slightly bent, lifted. And that's just letting your shoulder blades, giving your space for those shoulder blades to come in back behind you. And stay playful with your balance. If you fall out of it, no worries. When you're ready, take it back to your high lunge. So... Plant the ball of the right foot, lift up, full expression of that high crescent lunge. Get nice and deep into it. Stabilize through your legs. Nice. And then on an exhale, you'll bring the hands down to low lunge. And we're taking it into side plank, Vashistasana. Right hand is your base. So outside edge of your right foot, left foot over the right, left hand to your hip or extended. Again, if you're doing that kickstand, you can drop the right knee below your hip with the toes out to the side. Feel the hips pulling up away from the ground. So you're in your oblique muscles, your side body muscles. Whatever variation you want with that top hand to your hip, reaching up, extended forward, and then rather than sinking into your right arm, lifting away from it. Your next exhale, move to your plank, and then your choice of how you're going to get into down dog. So whether you're shifting directly, whether you're using chaturanga, low cobra, upward facing dog, and that downward facing dog. Couple rounds of breath as we meet back in our downward facing dog. Release the weight of the head. Stay engaged while you're here. I know you've already been here before, but keep your awareness about you. So we'll take that sequence breath to movement. And I want you just to do your best with it. If there's parts that you get, you know, behind or ahead of me, no worries, or parts you need to skip, no worries. We'll start inhaling the right leg up to a three-legged down dog. And then on your exhale, you'll step up into a low lunge position. Inhale, high crescent lunge. And exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverses warrior. And then the exhale, cartwheels down, low lunge. Left leg lifts to standing, splits on the inhale, gazes to the back of the room. And as you exhale, forward fold, top of your mat. Inhale, half lift, lengthen the spine, strengthen, and then flying chair on your exhale, lifting the heels, taking the arms back. Drop your right heel, inhale, arms and left knee or left leg, one-legged mountain. And then exhale into airplane. 
Inhale, high crescent lunge. Plant the ball of the left foot back, arms up. And then exhale, low lunge. You can go right to plank or inhale to side plank. Left hand is your base, right arm lifts. And then on your exhale, your choice to down dog. I'm going to move through plank, halfway down. Press tops of feet, inhale, up dog. Exhale, back to down dog. And then we'll grab that one on the other side. So on an inhale, left leg lifts up, three-legged down dog. And as you exhale, take it up to your low lunge position. Inhale, high crescent lunge. And on your exhale, open to your warrior two. Inhale, reverses your warrior. And on the exhale, cartwheel down, low lunge position. Standing splits, right leg lifts on the inhale, gazes to the back of the room, and then full forward fold on the exhale. Right foot meets the left. Inhale, half lift, lengthen your spine, strengthen. And then flying chair on your exhale, lift the heels, reach your arms back. Drop your left heel, inhale, arms, right knee or leg, one-legged mountain. And then exhale, swim back to airplane. You got it. Inhale, high crescent lunge, tap the ball of the right foot behind you. And on the exhale, low lunge. Again, you can skip this, go to plank if you want, but Vashistas in the side plank on the inhale, right hand is your base. And on your exhale, your choice of how you make your way to down dog. I'm going high plank, low plank. Urdhva Mukhashvanasana, upward facing dog. Adho Mukhashvanasana, down dog. Meeting up in that down dog, friends, release your air all the way out. <sighs> Inhale to fill up. Exhale, side out. <sighs> nice, bring yourself down to your knees. Feel free to towel off or grab a drink. And then we're gonna go into some core work on our backs. Nice job. So first thing when you get down to your back, just bring your knees into your chest. Wrap your arms around your knees and give yourself a little rock side to side so you're massaging out your hips and your sacrum. And then we'll extend the legs straight up in space. Reach your arms back behind you, and we're gonna do some movement and then a hold in the movement. So when you're ready for it, we'll begin this movement where you exhale to touch your toes or as close as you come, lifting head and shoulders. Inhale brings your back and head and arms down. So exhales lift you up, and then the inhales reset, laying back down. And you take that slow and controlled at your own pace. Use your breath. You can stick with that ujjayi breathing. You can also go in and out through your mouth as well. Let's do our hold. So next time you come up, simply hold both arms straight up. Or if your neck needs support, throw one hand behind the base of the skull. And if you are, can actually hold your toes, let's avoid doing that. So it's a reach where your core muscles are flexing and you're breathing around the flexion. You're almost there on the hold. And then we're going back into the movement. Perfect, friends. Go back into that movement. So inhale, lay down. Exhales, lift back up. You're on to your last few here. Last one. Nice. So find Supta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle, recline cobbler's pose. Bottoms of feet together, knees wide. You can relax your arms at your sides. Weight of the head releases. And then just find that breath. Get all the way down to the end of the round of breath you're on, and then take the hands behind the base of your skull, lift your head off the ground, and then we'll extend the legs out to a diagonal with the feet together. And rather than there being an arch in your low back, we want your low back pushed and rooted to the ground. The movement when you're ready for it, exhale, sends your legs straight up, 
Then the inhale brings it back down. And you can switch that up if you want. You can inhale on the way up, exhale down as well. We'll hold the legs on the diagonal, low back rooted to the ground. Use your breath. Keep that low back rooted so your legs don't need to go super low. You're almost through your hold. Go back to the movement. You got it. A few more of these. Last two. Last one. <laughs> all right, guys, find a full morning stretch. Reach your legs all the way in front of you, arms all the way back behind you. Take a roll out through your ankles and through your wrists if that feels good, moving your fingers and your toes. Deep breaths in the body. And then drawing your knees into your body, take your hands to your hamstrings and start to rock back and forth the length of your spine. It's going to pull you up to your sit bones and then we'll bring you back down. And you can really take a lot of control with this roll. We'll meet up on the sit bones. And then as we set up into boat pose, start with just your heels tapped to the ground. Your knees are up in space. And then grab onto your hamstrings and just get the length completely up into your spine. Roll the shoulder heads down away from the ears, squeeze the blades in, then lift the feet, cross your ankles, and our movement, you can just join this with me right away. We're gonna start to twist to the left and to the right. If you've ever done any rowing, just that same type of motion you would do. and then find your navasana, find your boat pose. So you can do it with knees bent or legs lengthened. You can do it with hands to the back of the legs or arms open. Find that length in your spine that you felt earlier. So really feeling those shoulder heads opening uh, up and back, chest opening. Nice, go back into the twist, friends. Last one on each side. And then we're going to cross the ankles and come all the way forward into Sphinx Pose. So you, if you want, you could step back to a plank and then just lower all the way to the ground. Tops of the feet root to the ground. Root into your forearms. Lift up through your chest. With length through the back of your neck, just slowly turn your gaze across your left shoulder. So even a little twist in the neck while we're stretching through the abdominal wall in our low back. Slowly switch your gaze. Take it now over your right shoulder. And then leave your head upright or let the weight of the head gently come forward. And you might let your chin go a little side to side. Find cat in your upper back, lifting up through the shoulders. And then like you're laying out at the beach, just relax the head and the arms. Pick your feet up in space and make some circles with your ankles, some circles with your knees while you're here. Awesome, shoulder pigeon for your right arm. So just slide your body over to the left side of your mat. Once you're over to the left side of your mat, 
you will reach your right arm all the way to the right, palm is face down, and then push your left hand into the floor at your side, and you roll onto the right side body. You can stack the, plant the left foot to the ground back behind your right leg. Left hand can be into the floor, or you can take your hand to your hip or wrap it behind you. Awesome, friends. If you want, find a quadricep stretch for your left quadricep. So pull your left heel in towards your sit bone, and then reach your left hand back for the top of the foot, and then let that left knee gently kick back in space. Just an option if you want to take it. Next exhale, you're going to release, center yourself on your mat, and then send your right arm forward in space on your belly. Bend your right knee so your heel comes to the sit bone, and then reach your left hand to the top of the right foot. Engage like you're doing locust pose, but you've got a bind going here. So the thighs are off the ground as left leg reaches back. There is a balance of kicking and pulling between your left hand and your right foot. And then right arm is lifting off the ground, and we've got that length through the back of the neck. And you could always do locust pose again if the bind is not in the cards. Your next exhale, just lower down. We'll switch out that shoulder pigeon, so shift your body over to the right. Reach your left arm to the left wall, palm face down. And then press your right hand into the floor and roll onto your left side body. Relax your head. Plant your right foot to the ground back behind you. If you took that variation with me inside of your quadricep stretch, we'll bend the right knee, take the hand to the top of the foot, and then just gently let the knee kick back in space. Weight of the head is relaxed. Find your breath. Awesome. Next exhale, we'll release out of this. Turn on to the belly. Center yourself on your mats. This time, let your left arm go forward and then bend your left knee, heel to your sit bone. Right hand goes to grab onto the top of the foot and grabbing the inside edge. And then you take your lift up like you're going into locust pose. And this is Ardha Dhanurasana, so this is half bow pose. Find that length through the back of the neck. Stay with your breathing. Again, you could always take a locust pose instead of taking this bind. Exhale, releases us down. And then to meet up in down dog, you can move through your tabletop or move up through your plank position. Get back into your down dog. Find your breath, friends. Relax the weight of your head. And then from here, we'll inhale the right leg up and back into a three-legged downward facing dog. Open the hip and bend the knee. So you're going to make a scorpion tail. Your toes drape down to the left as the knee lifts up. Watch that your left shoulder is not dipping super low. And then we can take this to wild things. So you can flip the dog. Plant your right foot back behind you. It looks like bridge pose. The heel's underneath your knee. Left leg could look like a side plank or look like bridge. And then you lift up through the hips as you push to your left arm. Gaze turns up. And that right arm is reaching forward in space. Use your breathing. Inhale takes us back up to three-legged down dog. And on your exhale, bring your right knee to your left elbow or tricep. 
Okay, now for this move, we're going to extend the right leg off the left side of the mat. Did I say that the right way? I think so, yeah. So you're going to land on the knife edge of it. Drop your back left heel to the ground, root into your right arm, and then lift your left arm up. Perfect. So you can stay right here, or if you want to go to a version of side plank with opposite hand, opposite foot, you'd start to lift now the right foot off the ground towards the left wall. Right on. Stay with that breath. We'll go back to three-legged down dog on your inhale. And on your exhale, step the right foot to the outside of your right hand for runner's lunge. I also love calling this one lizard pose because if you drop your back knee and then you slide your left leg back a little bit, it looks like you've got a lizard tail. Inside of this one, you can keep your hands to the ground. If you have a block, or I could even do this with my water bottle, you can also bring your forearms down to an elevated position. Or if your forearms come all the way down to the ground, we can work with that as well. We want to keep the alignment of your right knee above your right heel and your right foot spread into the ground. You might even just let the right toes shift a little bit to the right, pivoting with your heel, open the inside of your right foot slightly forward. And then your neck muscles can take a break as you just breathe into the inside of your right leg here. Find that breath. And I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the other side, but just watch that we're not sinking the hips down to the left or forward or backwards. Uh, we want to place the hips into the pose. So we want to be feel engaged around the hips. And then from there, you'll start to bring your hands to the ground if you're on your forearms. Lift your back knee off the ground if the toes are tucked. Right leg comes up to a three-legged down dog. And then we're going to come into half pigeon. So now cross the right shin to the top of your mat. And if you want to do double pigeon on your sit bones or you want to go to recline pigeon, awesome. One alignment piece as you press to your fingertips in upward facing pigeon is that the right knee is on the outside of your right hand. You might slide your left leg back a little bit. And then you just take it to your forearms when you're ready and bring the weight of your head to your hands or to the ground. We can work with the side of the right foot to the earth. We can also work with the top of the right foot down to the ground. Just watch that the hips aren't sinking to the left or to the right. The front of your left leg is pointing down to the ground. The front of your left thigh is pointing to the ground. Find the breath and release the weight of the head here, whether it's, again, it's to the hands or whether it's to the earth. Start to press back up to your hands. Tuck the left toes and we'll meet in our downward facing dog. From that down dog, inhale brings your left leg back and up in space. And on your exhale, open the hip and bend the knee, drape your toes down over to the right, knee lifts up. So again, you've got the choice to stay here with scorpion tail or pivot with the right hand. And then set that, flip the dog, left heel underneath your knee, just like bridge pose. Keep your right leg like side plank or right heel also underneath your knee like bridge pose. Hips lift up, 
Left arm goes to the front of the room, reaching forward, and then gaze turns up towards the sky and nice and strong in that right arm. Inhale takes it back to three-legged down dog, and on your exhale, bring your knee over to your right elbow or tricep. Okay, left leg off the right side of your mat onto the knife edge of it. Back right heel to the ground, press to your left arm, lift your right arm up. Fantastic place to stay, or if you want, you can start to lift that left leg off of the ground. And again, that back right leg is extended to the ground. Awesome. Let's go into three-legged down dog when you're ready. Breathe in. And then runner's lunge on your exhale. So left foot outside of left hand. Back right knee can lower. You can slide it a little bit back into the right. <sighs> nice. Stay on your hands or start to work the forearms to your block or down to the ground or close to it. So with the hips here, there could be the tendency just to kind of let your right hip drop down. We want to press into all corners of the left foot, stabilizing your knee, and then let the hip square towards the ground. So rather than sinking or dipping, you're feeling that engagement right here. Neck muscles can relax out. And then from your forearms, you start to come back to your hands. From the back knee down to the ground, tuck the right toes and reach your left leg back up into a three-legged down dog. And then we'll cross the left shin to the top of the mat for a half pigeon. Or you're on your back in recline pigeon on your sit bones in double pigeon. And you can take that moment before you fold just to set up your legs, set up your body. And then when you are ready for it, make your way down onto your forearms. Bring the weight of the head down to your hands or to the mat. Side of the left foot to the ground, a little bit of flexion of your toes in towards your shin, or the top of the foot is to the ground. And then the front of your right leg is just pointing down in space. So we're not, again, not sinking to the left or to the right. Use your breath. Press up to your hands. We're going to our last downward facing dog. And from there, you can start to bring the knees down to the ground. Drop one of your hips to the floor. Bring your legs forward in space. And then if you need to grab a drink of water, you can grab one. We're going to make our way all the way down onto our backs at this point. Draw your knees into your chest and give yourself a nice little rock out here. Just massaging the hips, massaging the low back.
take the feet to the earth a hip bone distance. Knees are reaching up. Step your heels back in until you've got the heels under your knees and then press into your elbows, press into your triceps. Lift the hips up. Shoulders can step in a little bit closer. We can keep the feet rooting into the earth as the hips lift, pressing into your arms. Any other variation with your arms you want to grab here, please feel free. If you're gazing at your belly, just watch the rise and fall of your breath as you work that diaphragm breathing. And when your next exhale rolls through, just vertebrae by vertebrae, release down. Bring your knees in towards you. And then we'll create a spinal twist, stacking your knees over to the left, onto the outside edge of your left hip. And then turning and reaching your right arm out to the right. Left hand can pull down on the top and outside of your right knee while you're here. Right shoulder is relaxing towards the ground or even a little bit of a press towards the ground. And just feel your breath working the twist. Start to switch the sides of our twist out. So stacking your knees to the right. Reach and extend that left arm to the left. And when those exhales roll through, that's that really nice reminder for your body that it can let go, it can release into this. As you come out of the twist, we can just take the knees into the chest and rock it out, or you could take happy baby, knees out wide, pulling on the big toes or the edges of the feet, soles of the feet shining to the sky, getting the low back to come close to the ground or pulling it into the ground as you just rock side to side. And then for your final resting pose, your corpse posture, Shavasana, just make yourself super comfortable. We're letting the legs just relax out in front of us, releasing the arms at our sides. And you can let go of controlling your breath at this point and just let your body take back over on the breathing. And with Shavasana, we find that physical stillness. And as we find the physical stillness, we're inviting our mind and we're inviting our emotions into that place of stillness, so into a deeper place of peace.
no warning, no crying. Well, 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 I remember when we used to sit well, in the government yard in Trench Town. We're observing the hypocrites as they would mingle with the good people we meet. Good friends we've had now, good friends we've lost. We're all along the way. This bright future, you can't forget your past. To dry your tears, I say. When no woman, no crying. 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 Well, I remember when we used to sit in the government yard in Trench Town. And then Georgie would make a firelight as it was with logwood burning through the night. And we would cook what cornmeal porridge, yeah, of which I'll share with you. And my fear is my only courage, yeah, so I got to push on through. But what I'm gonna say. Well, everything gonna be all right. Now everything gonna be all right. Well, everything gonna be all right. Well, everything gonna be all right. So, woman, no cry. Well, no woman, no cry. Say woman no, say woman no, say woman no cry. Well no woman no cry. Well here little sister, don't shed no tears. Well no woman no cry. So start to bring some life back into your body, wiggling your fingers and your toes, moving your ankles and your wrists. You could stretch and reach your arms all the way back overhead behind you to a full morning stretch. And then just turn onto your side into a fetal position, curling up, relaxing the weight of the body. And from your side, we'll meet up as if we were getting ready to do a seated meditation. So bringing yourself up to your sit bones, crossing your legs, and then pulling the flesh away from the sit bones to find the front edge. 
And from the front edge, we can lengthen the spine. You could roll your shoulders down away from the ears on the back and bring that length all the way into the back of your neck. Friends, it's been my pleasure to lead you through your practice today. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste.